Hi everyone, I'm Mike and this is the Sunday Art Show. This week I'm going to paint a young stag with antlers uh, in his prime, out in the sunshine in the Devon countryside. So a bit of a landscape going on around the animal painting. And this week I'm going to do a, ever such a slightly different technique compared to normal. Um, you'll see the difference in just a little bit, but I'm starting out with my usual materials. So I'm starting out with some A2 sized mixed media paper and I've got a watercolour marker pen and I'm using the brush nib of that pen and what I'm doing here is just outlining the animal quite loosely and you know a stag has got you know quite a lot of complicated shapes going on the antlers the general lines of the body are reasonably complex but what I'm doing here is just trying to keep the shapes nice and simple and so I've been inspired by this stag here, which was one of a group I found in the grounds of Powderham Castle, uh, which is quite near Exeter, where I live. So this is so awesome because we've got so many of the stag here underneath the shade of this tree. Uh, there, look at this guy, look at this guy, <laughs> knocking his antlers on the lower branches. And... Um, this is by far the closest I've been able to get, so we'll hopefully be able to do a fairly decent painting in just a minute. So as you can hear, I was actually pretty pleased to have to have found the deer so close to the, the fence because it's actually about the third trip I'd taken to Powder and Castle to try and do some nice reference sketching. So I'll show you some of the outdoor studies I did while, while I was there. But here's the, here's the difference. So. Having put the line drawing down with the watercolour marker, I sprayed the drawing with water and now I'm dragging a big brush which has some ultramarine blue acrylic paint on it and a little bit of titanium white, a little bit of burnt umber and I'm dragging that th through the drawing. And as you can see, it's blurring the line work that I put down and also causing some streaks to, to be dragged across the surface of the paper. And you can see in, from this angle just how wet I got that uh, surface of the paper as well so it's almost like a watercolour wet in wet technique and I'm continuing with that for the beginnings of the landscape so here I've switched to a round synthetic brush and I'm still using the interactive acrylic but I'm using it very much like watercolour and I'm using that to kind of block in with this rolling the brush technique the distant tree lined hills the idea being that I want to keep the the background fairly simple and softly suggested as if it was a watercolour painting but then I'm going to work up the the stag in rather more detail and rather more refined you know modelled a uh, model more of a modelled style and um, having done that I want to kind of anchor the animal to the ground because the the animal is standing just on the edge of a cast shadow from a big tree. So I want to kind of include that as well. So hopefully there'll be some nice contrasts in tone and colour going on. So I've just speeded up the footage here, as you can see. What I'm doing in is just varying the texture of the washes I put down as I come towards the foreground. And then I kind of stippled the, the trees in the distance. Um, just keeping things fairly simple, so just two or three tones, different colours, you know, from left to right, adding in some little bits of suggestions of tree trunks and cast shadows here and there. But I wanted to keep those distant trees you can see there just fairly simple. Now this is one of my earlier trips to Powderham Castle. And what you saw on screen just a moment ago was the, the deer were way off in the distance. So despite that, I, I using my Sharpie marker pen, I was able to take some really quick gestural sketches and you know these aren't all the greatest sketches in the world by any means you know some of them are very quick studies I mean I'm quite happy with this little one here uh, so some of them are okay but others are just very quick but I find doing these really quick studies from life it really helps to kind of get to know how the animal moves and is all connected together and the different poses that they adopt you can see that one's not not even finished but this one here again I'm quite happy with that I mean it's very simple but for me, it kind of triggers a memory of what's going on. But you can see they were quite a way off in the distance. Now, the background watercolour style landscape, as I said, it, it is still interactive acrylic. Um, it's more or less dried. Certainly it's touch dry. Though, you know, there's probably a few drip, drips on the paper here and there, but it's basically touch dry. So what I'm doing now is coming in with the acrylic 
rather more thickly. Still a fairly thin layer though. And what I've done here is taken some alizarin, alizarin uh, crimson, some ultramarine blue, just a little touch of that, and some cadmium yellow deep with a little bit of titanium white to mix up that lovely reddish orange, but a dark version of it that the deer have on their hide. And so what I'm doing here is essentially blocking in with a thin layer, more or less the silhouette of my drawing. But at the moment, I'm just working on the antlers. Now, I have no intention of drawing every single little bit of each antler. What I'm actually going to do is just pick out, just like I did with my initial drawing, different little lines of shadow and light. So they'll basically be connected from beginning to end. But even in the finished painting, there will be little gaps. I like that style of painting for antlers. I think it conveys a little bit of a sense of movement and a sense that the light is catching the antlers. You know, so you can't quite see fully what's going on. And you can see here the stag are just standing right on the edge of that cast shadow. So that's something I plan on including as my, you know, my main composition. So still just moving around the animal, adding these thin washes of colour. You can see I've got some purples in there as well as the orangey brown. And now I'm putting down a greyish blue shadow. So that's mixed up from a little bit of burnt umber, ultramarine blue and the titanium white. And having done that, I'm coming in with a brighter version of the orange. So having worked kind of light to dark for the background, a traditional watercolour style technique. I'm now going dark to light and I'm just speeding the footage up again here. You can see I'm gradually adding brighter and brighter highlights along with some patterning on the back of the animal. But even at this stage, some of that watercolour marker that I put down right at the start, where that kind of bled when I sprayed the water over the painting, that's still there, kind of like a blue aura around the animal. So the problem I've got is these deer are moving around all the time. So I'm going to have to work right, but we'll see how that goes. So now I need a colour on top. antlers and shadow. So this is uh, another trip I took to the uh, to the grounds of Powdron Castle. You can see these are the little colour watercolour sketches I took on that day. So previous visit I did quick line drawings, another quick line drawing there and then a couple this one's a bit messy but you know it's still important an important part of my process. Now this Sharpie sketch was done back at home to plan the composition for the painting I'm working on, the main painting I'm doing in this video. And I decided to, you can see, I decided to place the animal off center on the paper. So having done more modeling on the animal and now coming in with some bolder washes for that big region of cast shadow that I've mentioned a couple of times now. So the tree that's casting the shadow that you can see here, it's not in shot at all, but I really feel it kind of distinguishes the animal and the foreground really nicely from the, the brighter and more softly painted background. So having blocked in wet in wet some darker green tones, I'm now using the same big flat brush. You can see I've added some grassy textures there. And now I've gone back to my, my stag. It's again touch dry. And I'm just putting a wash of ultramarine blue over the entire region of the animal, which is in shadow. So all those lovely colours I put down, the purples and the, the blues and the greys, they'll show through when that overlayer of ultramarine has um, dried back, but they'll be subdued and a little bit more coherent than I had before. And that's a technique I used the other week if you saw the how to paint a hen video. Now the, the arrangement of the legs of this particular animal, I managed to catch the, uh, him in the photo. The front legs were crossed and the, the rear legs were almost crossed as well. So it's kind of an unusual stance and that also appealed to me. Now I'm coming back to the antlers with a small round brush. And as I mentioned before, I'm just picking out areas of mid-tone, areas of shadow and areas of highlight, but without really drawing the shape of the antler. Back in with my flat brush next, just picking out little flower heads and angling the brush using the corner, using the edge, changing the angle to give a variety of shapes and flowers, and then a little bit of an introduction of some slightly warmer colour to echo the colour on the stack. 
And again, I can just sort of rub some of this paint off. I can dilute it, a little bit of dry brush here and there. So this one I've decided to call In My Prime. Now, how we frame the painting, there's the full painting, is a little bit up for debate. I like that a lot, and that's what I'm going to go for. But I may offer this closed-in version, this vertical version, as a print. But there we go. That's pretty much it for this video. Hope you enjoyed watching me bring this stag in a Devon landscape to life. Thanks very much for watching, and I hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of The Sunday Art Show.